good morning, everyone. Good morning. And welcome to the worship service at St. Paul Lutheran Church. Uh, if you are visiting us, thank you for uh, joining us. Uh, today, as we dig out of nearly uh, two feet of snow, and um, it's what, negative 14 out there, um, we are celebrating uh, the second Sunday after Epiphany. Uh, we will be continuing our discussion about the wise men. Uh, long ago, they gave gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh to the Christ child, which was good and appropriate to give to him. But what should we give to Jesus today? As we continue our series, our theme is giving honor to our King. A special thanks to uh, Betty Brown, who was able to chip through the ice and get here this morning. Um, she's our pianist for today, and just as long as her fingers have warmed up. Uh, please feel free to sing along all of the lyrics for the songs can be found in your hymnal. Uh, if you are able to, I ask you to please rise. Our opening hymn for this morning is hymn number 380, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. <laughs> to turn to you in prayer and worship, 
and we have failed to place our trust in you. We have also hurt the people around us, and we have failed to help them. Almighty God, please forgive us for all we have done and for all we have failed to do. We are sorry. Help us do better. In response to your heartfelt confession, in his mercy, God the Father has given his Son to die and rise for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, by his authority, I therefore forgive all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, your Son Jesus was born on Christmas to rescue us from our sins. In response to this good news, help us in faith to rejoice and bring before you gifts that are fitting for our eternal King. But through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our reading of Scripture. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 29, verses 13 and 14. Jesus quoted a portion of this text of Scripture to the Pharisees and scribes calling them hypocrites, because they, like the people before them, would honor God on the Sabbath and worship, but then dishonor them in their daily lives and actions. The Lord said, Because this, people draw near with their mouth and honor me with their lips, while their hearts are far from me, and their fear of me is a commandment taught by men. Therefore, behold, I will again do wonderful things with this people, with wonder upon wonder, and the wisdom of their wise men shall perish and the discernment of their discerning men shall be hidden. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading is from Revelation chapter 5, verse 1 to 14. With these words, the Apostle John describes a vision he saw when God the Father gave his son Jesus a scroll to open. Then I saw in the right hand of him who was seated on the throne a scroll written within and on the back, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and break its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or look into it. And I began to weep loudly, because no one was found worthy to open the scroll or to look into it. And one of the elders said to me, Weep no more. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. And between the throne and the four living creatures, and among the elders, I saw a lamb standing, as though it had been slain, with seven horns and with seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent off into all the earth. And he went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who was seated on the throne. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and open its seals, for you were slain. And by your blood you ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and the people and nation. And you have made them a kingdom and priests to our God, and they shall reign on earth. Then I looked, and I heard around the throne, and the living creatures and the elders, the voice of many angels, numbering myriads and myriads and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them, saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise with the hallelujah and verse. <laughs> Yeah. 
there's no politicians here today, are there? You know, somebody just left. Sorry. Okay, yeah, politicians, right. Anyone, um, you know, what, what else? What, 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 what? Hypocrite. I mean, it's such a dirty word. Perfect. Thank you, Elaine. Yes, it is someone who says one thing and then does the exact opposite. Um, an example of this is in our Old Testament reading for today. Uh, in it, in verse number 13, Jesus said that some people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, while their hearts are far from me. Any idea of what Jesus means by that? Draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips. Maybe go to church, right? Sure. I mean, once we get there, some days are easier to get to church than others. Right? <laughs> but when we get to church, it's pretty easy for us to follow along with everyone else and honor Jesus with our mouths and our lips by what we say. You know, it's so easy for us sometimes to say the right things. Um, for instance, when we confessed our sins to God just a few minutes ago, we said, we are sorry, help us do better. Now, when we said that to God, we honored it with our mouths and with our lips by saying that we are sorry for all the bad things that we have done and failed to do. But what happens when we leave church and do the exact same thing over again? Did we do what we said we were going to do? No. That means that, uh, sad to say, we're a hypocrite. But what do you think is better? To honor God with our mouths by what we say, or honor God with our bodies by what we do, or honor God, honor God with our hearts. Which one's better? Hearts, right? Yeah. Because we're not perfect. Sometimes we say and do bad things. But if our heart desires to honor God by trusting and believing in Him, then that is what's best. Because that is what's going to lead all of us to eternal life, no matter what we say or do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The hymn of the day for today is hymn number 341. Lift up your heads, ye mighty gates.
acts of service. Today, we give honor to our military personnel, and sometimes to a leader who shows these qualities. But here's something for us to consider. Who was the last president or a politician that we honored as a nation? Think back. Way back. Was it Eisenhower? How about Kennedy? You realize that that was just about 60 years ago? The times have most certainly changed, but some things will always remain the same. But God reveals to us in the Bible that we should honor our father and our mother. Exodus chapter 20. But we should also honor some of our governing authorities. Romans chapter 13. And in 1 Peter chapter 2, the apostle encourages us as Christians to honor everyone. Well... That is to give honor to everyone to whom honor is due. I know. It's been quite a while since we've honored someone publicly as a nation. But is that because there is no one to honor? Or is it because we as a society, we fail to give honor to those to whom honor is due. Now, I think that both of these statements are correct. Times have changed. A part of the reason for this is that we have become divided as a nation. And generally speaking, our presidents and politicians recently have not been known for their high moral character or selfless acts of service. Despite the sad state of our country, I know that there is someone who we should all be honoring today. In our epistle reading, it is written that when God the Father was seated upon his throne in heaven, a mighty angel proclaimed, Who is worthy to open the scroll and break? It seals. Revelation chapter 5, verse 2. No one was found except for one. When God the Father handed the scroll to his son Jesus, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before him and sang, Worthy are you to take the scroll and open its seals. You were slain by your blood. You ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. And then thousands upon thousands of angels sang, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing forever and ever. Long ago, the wise men fell down and worshiped Jesus because they knew him to be the king of the Jews. They gave the gift of gold to Jesus to represent his kingship. But today, it has been revealed to us that Jesus is much more than just an earthly king. He is our everlasting king, whom God the Father has given all authority and power to. Now, all of creation should honor Jesus today and every day. But how? But we see an example of this in our gospel reading. 
when Mary, the sister of Lazarus, anointed Jesus with some expensive perfume. She honored Jesus. She bowed down before him with great respect and reverence. She acknowledged him at that dinner for his character and achievements. She admired him, respected him, and gave him much gratitude for bringing her brother back from the dead. And when she anointed Jesus with that expensive perfume and wiped his feet with her hair, Mary showed her humble devotion to the Savior who was going to suffer and die soon so that our sins could be forgiven. Today, we're not afforded with the opportunity to bow down at the feet of Jesus and anoint his feet with some expensive perfume. And that's okay. Because the time for that is long past. Now, since he has sacrificed himself for us on a cross, and risen from the dead, and ascended into heaven, we can honor Jesus today and every single day because he has accomplished our salvation. As Americans, we've honored military personnel and some of our presidents with parades, statues, and federal holidays. But this just doesn't seem appropriate or fitting for Jesus. So let's consider a few ways that we could give honor to our eternal king today. Uh, number one, we can give honor to Jesus by acknowledging his character and achievements, and we can also show him our gratitude. As an example, we can acknowledge Jesus by giving him the credit. When someone says that you've done a job well done, you can simply point your finger upward and say, all glory goes to Jesus, because he's the one who has all power and authority, who has given to me and to all of you the ability and the resources to accomplish all of those things that we do. We can also honor Jesus by showing him our gratitude by openly thanking and praising him when good things happen. As our eternal king, he is providing for us, but he is also protecting us too. Hi, Reese. So, when someone asks uh, how you're feeling, you can make the statement, I'm feeling much better. Thank you for asking. God is good. Another way that we can acknowledge Jesus' character and achievements is by speaking to others about him. You can share with them what he has done for you. Or you can do this by simply finishing this sentence. I love Jesus because he loves me. Because he has placed my well-being above his very own. He sacrificed himself for me. He has rescued me. Despite all of my faults, he has given to me the gift of eternal life. I love Jesus because he is my Savior. Uh, number two, we can honor Jesus by giving him respect and reverence. 
For example, we can respect Jesus by fearing him. Now, not in the way that people feared King Herod back in the day, no. But we can respect Jesus as our eternal king in a proper way by living in awe of him. Now, this is something that we have really lost as a society. People don't even recognize God as God anymore. And they're certainly not living their lives as God is looking down upon them as his loving creator. No. We can live in awe of Jesus. Because he is the one who has all power and authority. He can literally destroy all of us. Just like the residents of Sodom and Gomorrah in a split second. Yet Jesus chooses to love us and pour down upon us his mercy and grace despite us. We can also honor Jesus by giving him reverence. But we can do this by a simply a coming to church. Simply coming to church on a day that's 12 below zero and we're still digging out of almost two feet of snow. Some days are easier to come to church than others. I mean, look at the, with your look with the little girls and stuff. Were they jumping up and down? Let's go, let's go. <laughs> Probably not. Coming to church. We give Jesus reverence by bowing down before him by worshiping him, and by singing songs of praise to him. That's really hard to do at your own home. It's really hard to do out in the field somewhere. It's really hard to do walking down the street. There's a big difference between thinking about God and giving him reverence. We respect Jesus and give him reverence because he is our God in the flesh. Number three, uh, finally, we can give honor to Jesus by placing him above all others. For example, you can make his relationship with you your top priority in this life. As your eternal king, savior, God, you should at least start your day with him. Spend time with him. He's waiting to hear from you. Give him your thoughts, your desires, your wants, your needs, your devotions. And of course, your prayers. Well, over the years, we have honored many people. Our parents, our military personnel, and even some of our presidents and leaders. Because we should give honor to all to whom honor is due. And there are many ways that we can honor them. But if you want to honor Jesus, in a way that is appropriate and fitting, then you shall live your life according to how he wants you to. By acknowledging him. By showing him gratitude. Giving him respect and reverence. And by placing him above all others. You see, we're doing this in response to everything that he has done and is continuing to do for us. This is how we can give honor to our eternal king today and every day. In the name of Jesus, amen. May the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding Guard and keep our hearts and minds on Christ Jesus. Amen.
Uh, just a quick reminder, uh, thank you to um, all of you that continue to support the ministries here at St. Paul. Um, if you would like to place a, an offering, if you'd like to help support uh, the ministries today, uh, there is a box on the table in the um, back of the sanctuary. Um, thank you so much. At this time, I invite you to rise as we continue our worship service this morning with the prayers of the church. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, you have revealed to us good news that can bring us great joy, knowing that you have sent to the world a Savior in the birth of your Son, Jesus. In response to your love and great mercy through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, help us to give honor to Jesus, who is our eternal King, God, and Savior. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty God, we pray for all of the people who have been affected by the wars in this world. Lord, we ask you to heal those who are injured, comfort the family members and the friends of those who have been killed, rescue those who are being held against their will, provide food and shelter to the refugees, and if it is according to your will, Destroy those who are evil and bring peace quickly to these areas. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. God of all, it is with great thanks that you have moved this congregation and our friends to support the ministries here at St. Paul. The prayers were works of service and financial offerings. Lord God, this time we ask you to bless all of these gifts that we have placed before you. Use them so that the good news about Jesus will continue to be heard of and witnessed in our communities so that more souls may be brought into your everlasting kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Eternal Father, we pray for Lane Edwards, Laverne Byer, Annika Clippert, and Brecklin and Rosier, who are celebrating their birthdays this week. And we also pray for Ramey and Tracy Distelmeyer, who are celebrating their 41st wedding anniversary tomorrow. Lord, continue to watch over and bless them in this life with good health and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. God of love and tender mercy, we humbly ask you to provide shelter and protection to all of your people from this extreme weather. We pray for all who are outside we pray for those who are traveling. We pray for those who are still trying to dig out of the snow. Lord, we pray that you would continue to watch over, protect us, and keep us safe. Lord, in your mercy. God of love and tender mercy, we humbly ask you to provide healing to all in need. We specifically pray for the family members and loved ones of Janet Lunning, a friend of John and Sandy Ebert, who passed away last week. We also pray for Norma Putnam, Sandy Reeser, and Janet Roberts' great grandson, Luke. We pray for Betty Cox, Kathy Richmond, Alan Paschke, Haley Walters, Wayne Haas, Mark, Sam Siangi, Rick Schnacke, Marianne Murphy, Dale Wooster, Daryl Steinhagen, John Ebert, Sandy Ebert, Jim Burgett, Sherry Kromzak, Betty Markier, Diana Heidenreich, Shirley Eggie, Marion Brosia, Ann Paschke, Esther Heidenreich, Sherry Eggie, Morris Krug, Leona Trost, and John Hobbs. Lord, we praise your holy name for all who have experienced encouragement and healing from you this week through your grace. We especially thank you for the good news that Sandy Ebert received from her doctor. At this time, we also pray for all of those who are in our hearts and minds 
this morning. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands we commend the Lord, and we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. Lord, look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. Amen. Uh, please feel free to be seated. Our closing hymn for today is hymn number 397, As with Gladness, Men of Old. Sure that it didn't warm up at all over the past hour. So please, we 
we've got warm coffee, uh, we've got warm conversations. Uh, please feel free uh, to stick around as long as you would like. Um, also, I'm thinking about the cold. Um, I'd like for you guys to do me a favor. As uh, you are driving home today, as you are asking our eternal King Jesus to watch over and protect you on your way home, Ask him to put a couple of people that you know that live nearby in your heart. And the people that come to mind, do me a favor. As soon as you come home, give them a call. Make sure that they're doing okay. It's going to be really cold over the next couple of days. And I really think that this is a way that God can work in and through this church. And not just you here, but also all of you who are watching online, uh, please uh, do the same. After you finish watching this video, uh, please uh, say a prayer to God, asking him to uh, place into your hearts uh, the names of people that he would like for you to reach out to. This week at St. Paul, um, we are in the process of updating our, our picture directory. Um, there are two office copies on the podium in the back of the church. Um, if you have not done so as of yet, please um, give us your information. Um, check your information. Make sure that it is. Um, make sure that it is current. If it is current, just put a smiley face in the in the in the uh, margin. That would be great. If your name is not in there, please put it in there. This is our picture directory. This is our phone directory. And you don't need to be a member here in order to be in that directory. Ah, isn't that interesting? Community of Christians, talking about the community, um, we're thinking about bringing back the, um, the monthly meals here to Elizabeth. Um, and the community of Christians that is reaching out to see if anyone would like to uh, help us in that endeavor. We've got a lot of people already signed up. Thank you so much. Um, if you haven't signed up yet, please uh, please do so. Uh, we're going to be sending out um, we're going to be sending out an email to everybody on that list um, on Tuesday. And we'll be asking them if they can attend a meeting, either in person or via Zoom, um, on the 18th, the 19th, or the 20th at 2 o'clock. This is just going to be a brief organizational meeting to us, uh, so that way we can uh, talk about ways in order to make this happen. Um, so, if you would like to be a part of this meeting, uh, please feel free to uh, give me a call or call the church office. We will be calling all of the people who have already listed, um, put their name on the sheets. But uh, please think about if one of those days works better for you, whichever day works best, that's the day that we're going to have the meeting. Are there any other announcements that I may have missed? Reese, you got anything? <laughs> no? <laughs> Any other announcements? May the Lord continue to richly bless you, your family, and our community during this holy season of epiphany. God's love.